Hi folks, I'm Craig Taylor and as always a huge thank you for joining me here on my YouTube channel The Bushcraft Padawan. Now, the more observant amongst you will have spotted several things. One, I'm not in the woods. Two, I'm not wearing bushcrafty type of clothes. I'm actually wearing a shirt, a pair of shorts and a pair of flip-flops. I will spare you from having to look at my legs. But I'm not in the woods. In fact, I am, in every sense of the word, in my own front garden. My front doorstep is just there. I'm at home. And there's a reason that I'm taking this approach with this video. Let me explain a little bit of background. Like perhaps some of you, I'm a member of some Facebook groups that are talking about wilderness living, wild camping, bushcrafting, camping, that type of thing. And this question came up in one of those groups a few weeks ago. It's appearing on the screen now, but let me read it out to you as well. Where in the UK would you say is the perfect place to live for practicing bushcraft? And that got lots of what I would call typical, obvious answers. Scotland was mentioned, Wales, Dartmoor, Alaska and Canada were mentioned as well. So I'm not entirely sure about the accuracy of the geography there. But anyway, places were mentioned, obvious places. And I came back and, and, and replied to that comment thread with this. In your local park, on the school run, grass verges, in your back garden, on the outskirts of your local farmer's field, on the beach, while out walking your dog. I think a lot of time people get focused on needing to be in the woods on an overnight to practice their skills. When in actual fact things like tree and plant ID, navigation, wildlife observation, observing the sun, stars, weather prediction etc 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 can all be practiced in far more accessible and everyday locations. So what I thought I would do is I would put together this video. I am going to record a little piece of video every single day for the next seven days. And I am going to give you an insight into things that I'm doing without going anywhere almost literally on my front doorstep and the surrounding area. But I'm going to be showing you the kind of, of opportunities and places and things that I manage to weave into my daily working life to help me practice those bushcraft skills. What I'm hoping is that, that a penny drops and that people have a realisation that yes, it's nice to go to these remote places, but most people don't live in Scotland. Most people don't live in Wales or, or Dartmoor. Most people live in other places. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't get out there and practice your skills and develop your knowledge. So stay tuned, stay with me for the next seven days or so, and let's see if I can sow any ideas for how you might be able to develop your skills. Keep watching. Me again, I am sat at a local cafe that's on the edge of some open parkland. I'm probably about a mile, maybe a little less, from my front door and I'm looking out across this huge expanse of open sky that you can see now and I can see a lot of clouds are starting to form and come in from a westerly direction. So it's an opportunity for, to be, for me to pick up my Collins Gem Guide to Weather, my instant weather forecasting book and for me to be able to get an idea about what those clouds are how they're formed and how they might be a predictor of weather to come, all within a mile of my front door. It's me again, it's Saturday, I'm about a mile and a half from my front door and I'm on, I guess what you could call, Peace Haven Beach. And I use the word beach in the very loosest terms. So I'm, I'm on the seashore, I'm in a lot, of, there's a lot of rock pools around me, the tide is starting to come in. I don't know a great deal at all about seaweeds, cockles, winkles, foraging on the seashore, things like that. So this is a great place to come to try and improve my knowledge and skill in that area. It's quite ironic really, I live closer to the coast than I do any woodland, but my knowledge of what I can do in the woodland is far greater than that, than what I can do on the coastline, and yet I live on the coastline. That behind me is the English Channel. So this is how I'm going to spend a little bit of my Saturday. 
It's Sunday evening. I'm about a hundred meters from my front door and I'm stood underneath this magnificent horse chestnut tree. And there are many different trees and species in a very similar distance from my front door in different directions. I walk, drive, run, cycle past this tree almost every single day. And one of the great things about being able to keep your eyes open to the trees that are around you is that I've seen this tree turn from being very barren in the winter, having the summer, um, the summer buds, seeing those start to form, being able to touch them, feel how sticky they are, watch them start to bloom, turn into the tree in full foliage as you see behind me. And of course, as the year goes on, I'll see those leaves fall and the, the seeds or the conkers start to form. So within 150, 100 meters, 150 meters, of my front door in all sorts of different directions. I've got a range of trees that I can keep my eye on throughout the year, which will help me identify them once I go into a more remote area, all within 100 meters of my front doorstep. Me again, it's Monday morning. I'm about two miles from my doorstep and I am stood on a train station platform. Train station platforms for me, they're one of those non-places. They're kind of a place that kind of doesn't really exist anywhere. There's not a lot you can do there. They're a little bit like airport departure lounge or being a passenger in a car or sat in your doctor's waiting room, something like that. They're kind of a, a non-place. So I brought with me a couple of meters of paracord and what I'm gonna do while I'm sat in this beautiful weather on the train platform and indeed when I get on the train is I'm just going to practice some knots and I'm also going to learn some new knots. So here's another example within a couple of miles of my, my doorstep I'm in a non-location, I'm in a non-place, I, I can't really do a great deal here so here's a way to develop my bushcraft skills. I'm pretty sure that you end up in similar locations such as this and I'm pretty sure you may even end up in them even closer to your doorstep than I am me again it's Tuesday evening it's Tuesday night actually it's 23 15 hours I'm in my back garden so I'm only about 10 or 15 meters from my front door and it's clearly very dark so this is a good opportunity for me to come out into the back garden or anywhere look up there in the sky and start to get a better understanding about stars the constellations and how I might be able to use them to get a better understanding of direction and in turn some natural navigation so just because you might have run out of day or you might have run out of daylight that's no excuse there's still an opportunity for you to hone your bushcraft skills on a night in an evening as close to home as your back garden or thereabouts Hi folks, it's Wednesday, I'm about half a mile from my front door and I've come to an area that I frequent quite often when I'm running. This is normally the beginning or the end of a running loop that I do, depending on which direction that I go in. It's had very, very little development. This is technically one of the access roads, it's, it's, it's an unadopted road. It receives very little sort of um, traffic, very few dog walkers, it's quite an underdeveloped um, wild kind of area and it's only about half a mile from where I live. When I'm out running around here in the morning or on an evening I've seen all sorts of wildlife. I've seen foxes, badgers, rabbits, uh, I've seen something that's kind of a, of, a, of a weasel or a stoat. I'm not entirely sure what it was but it was something along those lines. I've seen rats of course around here as well. So one of the great things is that once I've seen them in an area I often come back after my run, not whilst I'm running, but after the run, and try and detect any sign, any droppings, any tracks. Have they been eating in an area? Have they been moving through an area and, and, and giving away some visible signs to their presence? So coming to an area like this that doesn't get a great deal of human traffic through it does mean that I get an opportunity to look for any wildlife and look for sign. Maybe there's an area like this close to where you live. It's Thursday and we are back where we started this video from, back in my front garden, right next to my front doorstep. 
I don't know about you, but the past week here in the UK has been incredibly hot, scorchingly hot. My back garden is south facing, which means that my front garden is north facing. So it's been a good place to retreat to for me to get, still get outdoors, but a little bit of shade. And what I did over lunchtime today was I came out here, sat in my front garden, out of the sun, in the shade, and I got to grips with doing a little bit of hacking, I mean carving away at this wooden spoon that I've been working on. So, you know, even those skills that you might traditionally see people doing out in the woods, such as wood carving, I just chose to do it literally sat on my front doorstep. So there we have it, the video has come full circle. Now I know and appreciate full well that some of the examples that I've given over the past week, some of the places that I've been, for example, the, the local wasteland close to me, the shoreline that's only a mile away from my front door, I completely understand that for many people watching this, you won't have access to those specific locations. And that wasn't the point of this video. The point of this video was to show you, which I've hopefully done, that there are plenty of ways for you to be able to get out there, practice your skills, develop new skills, do some research, do bushcrafty type things without necessarily having to go somewhere to spend an overnighter, having to put up a tarp or start a fire or carry a knife. There's lots of things that you can do much closer to home that are far more readily accessible and will allow you to keep your skill set developing and ticking over without waiting until you have the opportunity to go to these more far-flung remote places or wooded places. Hopefully you found this video useful and inspirational. Hopefully it's given you some ideas of things that you might be able to do closer to home. If it has, please do feel free to give this video a thumbs up. If there's anybody in your network that you think would benefit from watching this, do please feel free to share it with them. And as always, if you're not yet a subscriber, do click that subscribe button, should be in this bottom corner of the screen here. Become a subscriber and you won't miss out on any future videos from me. As always, a big thank you for watching.